Durham Region. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Securing your recycling in a few steps is simple, like bundling your cardboard separately. These bundles can act as a lid for your blue box or placing heavier items such as magazines on top of papers with no material above the rim. Hello everyone and welcome to Talk Politics. I'm Deborah Hutchison in the Rogers TV studio. Our guest this week joining us via Zoom is Pickering Mayor Dave Ryan. Dave, welcome to the show and Thank welcome you. back. Yeah, thank you so much. It's, I'm, you know, I'm really pleased to be back. And uh, uh, let, let me take a quick opportunity to thank everyone for uh, their prayers and well wishes that I received during the, this whole time. And uh, I want to make a special thank you to uh, Deputy Mayor Kevin Ash for the great job that he did uh, covering for me in my absence. And he certainly uh, uh, didn't, didn't expect to be there for, uh, for as long as he was. And, and then to have COVID come in on top of it, I think was... Uh, uh, he, he handled it admirably, so I'm really pleased for him. Thank you. Uh, let me ask you, I mean, there, there is no good time to have a lung transplant, but to have it and to have to go through that during COVID, um, you know, the extra pressure and the extra worry and the extra stress must have been incredible. It was extremely difficult, particularly on my family, because uh, with COVID, uh, we were separated. So I was in hospital for quite an extensive period of time and uh, they were at home. And uh, luckily we have things like FaceTime. Uh, so that, that helped somewhat, but it was a very difficult time for, for all of us. And, and um, uh, with that separation and the uncertainties and, and there, it was an uncertain time. Uh, you, you, know, you didn't know if, first of all, you were going to be eligible for a transplant. Secondly, you didn't know if a dinner a donor was going to show up in, in, in time. Uh, and then you don't know if the if the uh, transplant is going to be successful. I mean, I'm uh, on anti-rejection medications and uh, and will be probably for the rest of my life. And uh, that, that that that's just a reality of what happens with the uh, the transplant process. And and to have that separation on top of it, and the pressures that were on the 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 caregivers uh, and and the healthcare system, uh, all of those factors together, uh, made for a very stressful time. I mean, you saw firsthand being in the hospital, uh, you know, what our, our first line responders were going through as well. So, you know, we throw that term around that the, the, the front line heroes and, and uh, I we hope people really take it seriously because you're right. I was there and I saw it and they are uh, to see those people come in every day, the pressures they were they were under uh, and, and the care that they give and the caring that they give. and. and those are two distinct things. I mean, the care is, is the is the physical, it's the mechanics. The caring is how they support you and, and make you feel like you're an individual and you're important and, and they really do care about what's happening to you as a person. Uh, I, I, it's just, and, and the fact that they came in every day uh, and somehow managed to smile uh, and, and, uh, and, and try to be uplifting to all of us. So they truly are heroes and deserve all of the support and credit that we can give them. How long had you known that you were headed down this road before the transplant actually happened? Uh, it, it was a shock. It, it came on uh, extremely quickly. Um, obviously, I was uh, having some, some uh, health uh, issues, but they, they were being dealt with. Uh, in February, all of a sudden, things started to uh, accelerate. And uh, on March the 3rd, I was told that uh, I was either... Uh, going to have a, a lung transplant or, uh, uh, well, the other option wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, the, the other option, quite frankly, was palliative. Wow. And then, so the, the search was on for uh, a match and you found one relatively quickly. Uh, well, I didn't, but yes, through, through that, uh, that process, the, uh, the donor and, and uh, again, the, I have absolutely no idea who the donor is and, and uh, or was and, and the, uh, uh, but I would just like to extend my appreciation to the family of, of that person uh, and, and that person for, you know, being willing to uh, sign up for the donor. And let me encourage everybody out there to do just that. Uh, sign your donor cards 
uh, tell your family, um, you know, when, when the time comes, uh, you can, in fact, uh, obviously make a difference in, uh, in somebody else's life. And, uh, and I, I'm, a, I'm an example of that. So I, I will be, to the end of my days, uh, grateful to, to that individual and, and extend my appreciation uh, to their family. So here you are going through what you're going through. Uh, you know, COVID, at the time you had your, your transplant, I mean, COVID was, I mean, it was raging throughout the world. Um, right. When you learned of the tragic outbreak at Orchard Villa, um, talk to me about how you were feeling about that and the frustrations that not being able to be there too. Well, and, and that and that's the word. It was frustration. Obviously, it, 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 it's a tragedy and a travesty uh, that that would happen at all. Uh, you know, most, most of the most of the, the the deaths that occurred in Durham Region uh, were in long-term care homes, mm. uh, and Orchard Villa was certainly a, a focal point in, in, for that. Uh, almost uh, almost 80 deaths in the one facility, and and it, it, it's heartbreaking. And my heart and prayer go out to, to the families that were directly affected uh, through that. Uh, and um, it, it was extremely frustrating to be in hospital dealing with what I was dealing with, uh, but still being aware. And, and uh, but again, I want to thank uh, Councillor Rash. I think that uh, he did an admirable uh, job uh, representing the city and, and being supportive uh, of the uh, the families and, and uh, as they were going through that. And, I think it needs to be recognized that you know that these are, in this case, a private facility, privately operated, regulated by the uh, the province and, and the region, uh, and the municipality, although not directly involved, um, I think it uh, did as much as it as it could uh, in terms of being supportive uh, of the families. Uh, we um, passed a resolution asking the the province to. Uh, to step up and, and do what is necessary to correct the situation. And I think uh, from this, the, there will in fact be um, a focus. We know that there's an inquiry underway. Um, I'm, frankly, I don't know why we need an inquiry. It, it's blatantly, patently obvious uh, what the issues are. Uh, and uh, they, they need to be addressed specifically and they need to be just addressed expeditiously. And it makes you wonder, I mean, we've all known for a very long time what the issues are and why no matter what government has been in power, it's taken this long to, to, to really address it. Well, that's just it. You know, it, it's one of these things that uh, everybody knows about, but somehow they, it, it just is it, getting pushed off to the side or stepped over. Or, and uh, uh, it's just it's just not acceptable. And, you know, it, out of out of every emergency and tragedy, uh, there there comes the opportunity, and uh, I think the focus that uh, has been brought to bear on the on this situation, although again uh, tragic and and uh, you know the the families that are directly affected are saying like you know why did it have to come to this and and it's a good question, uh, but it has and uh, I think it's now incumbent on the. Uh, on the uh, federal provincial governments to uh, step up and uh, and get this thing fixed get it right and get it done now agreed definitely agreed uh, so throughout this though um throughout your convalescence you were const in constant communication though with councillor ash correct uh we we spoke quite frequently yes as much as much as uh, as my uh, my situation uh, allowed yes uh, so now that you are back, how did it feel to be back, to finally be back at work? Uh, well, uh, how did it feel? It, it feels great. Thank you very much. It, it, it's nice to be, to be back and, and to, uh, actually feel like I, I'm contributing directly and, and, uh, taking some of the load. Um, it's at the same time, uh, quite frankly, it's, uh, it's daunting because there is so much that has occurred over those uh, five months that, that, uh, I've been out of circulation and, um, notwithstanding, uh, 
the fact that I was in communication with uh, with Councillor Ash, um, and and so much going on in the city and the challenges that are presented in in a new basically a new world, uh, something that uh, we this generation certainly hasn't uh, experienced. Uh, you know, the, the last major pandemic, of course, was the uh, Spanish flu and uh, uh, literally 100 years ago. So the, um, uh, although we've, we've had things like SARS and so on, we've had nothing to the degree that we're experiencing with COVID. So it's, it's a whole new dimension, uh, but uh, it's a challenge that, um, that uh, I'm, I'm here, I'm ready, and uh, we're taking it on. And, and taking on, uh, I guess, the financial challenges uh, when you're looking at, uh, you know, the effect that COVID has had on uh, the, the city coffers and, and the businesses. Um, is Pickering still looking at a deficit? I know recently uh, you were the recipient of some um, federal and provincial dollars, but is it enough? But the, the provincial phase one, uh, and, and we're very grateful for it, by the way, the, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the province is, is stepping up and, and helping out the municipalities and, and that's great. Uh, Pickering received uh, $1.9 million in the uh, phase one. The difficulty is that although we've got a, uh, a $1.9 million budget, if you will, um, a, a supplemental, uh, we don't know exactly how we can spend it. Uh, because the province has not yet provided specific guidelines as to what would be uh, applicable within the envelope of the uh, of the uh, COVID expenses. So, uh, you know, we've spent uh, over um, almost $700,000 on uh, things like uh, personal protective equipment, uh, putting in um, uh, plexiglass screens uh, in uh, key critical areas of, of the municipality within City Hall as an example. Uh, so that people can work safely, the public can still have access uh, to the city hall, um, and we're we're expecting that those uh, those types of um, expenses would be included. But uh, there are ancillary expenses, if you will. So, for example, um, our people are working from home, as most businesses are, as much as possible. But that required them to then be provided with. Uh, specific uh, equipment, laptops, et cetera, or perhaps it's uh, something as simple as a webcam or uh, whatever is needed to allow them to communicate effectively and to um, fulfill their job functions uh, in, a, in a remote way. So um, obviously there's extra expenses there. So would, would those uh, expenses uh, be eligible? We, we just don't know. Um, we also know that if we exceed the 1.9 million expense, uh, that there is a phase two. Uh, we don't know what the dollar number is. And again, um, not knowing what's in phase one, we have absolutely zero idea. Okay, Dave, uh, I'm going to have to stop you there. We have to go to a quick break. Uh, more to come on Talk Politics after the break. Securing your recycling in a few steps is simple, like crushing your cans and bottles down in your container's blue box and your box board down in your paper's box. This saves a lot of space and reduces the possibility of material blowing out of your blue box on windy days. For 25 years, you've been helping to make our roads safer by doing the right thing. You've been the designated driver, you've stayed over, called home, you've called a cab or a friend and planned ahead. Let's keep doing the right thing. Support sober driving by getting yourself and your friends home safely. Do the right thing. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. Hi, I'm Jennifer Anderson. And I'm Allison Schaefer. Well, we are back for a new season of The Parenting Show. Little did we know that we were going to be having the pandemic version of The Parenting Show. Yeah, but one thing stays the same. Right here on this couch, Allison is providing information to let families know that they are not alone with the issues they're facing. Right, and we're tackling some of those big issues, the changes to education, Black Lives Matter, all on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Angel Morgan, host of Raising Energy. Join me weekly as I connect to spirits, animals, and so much more. That's right, Raising Energy, right here only on Rogers TV.
Welcome back to Talk Politics. Our guest this week is Pickering Mayor Dave Ryan. Welcome back to the show. Uh, when we went to break, we were, were talking about, um, I guess, the financial effect on uh, your budget with COVID-19. Um, kind of hard going forward. I mean, you it seems like you just uh, finalized one budget and now you're going to have to start looking at another. Talk about a daunting task. It's going to be very difficult because, uh, again, it's all about the uncertainty. Um, we don't know when, uh, for example, uh, the uh, the casino will will come back online, and that was a, a revenue stream that was projected in our in our budget, mm -hmm. uh, and would be projected into the 2021 budget. But uh, casinos obviously are closed. Um, they're not going to open under the current uh, rules where you can only have 50 people in at a time. That just doesn't make any sense. So uh, th those types of uncertainties, uh, again, we don't know how the city is going to operate. I think we all are anticipating a second wave, unfortunately, of, of COVID and the, um, you know, the, the implications of that in terms of um, city services and, and how we're going to adjust. Uh, and we've done this. Uh, we started in March, which was the end of winter, uh, but now we're going to enter into a, a complete new winter season and, and uh, you know, how we're going to manage the business of the city uh, through that period is uh, an unknown. So uh, very much um, speculative, but I have a lot of confidence in, uh, in our staff. We've got uh, a great treasurer and, and uh, the financial folks. Uh, he's been very, very good at anticipating uh, uh, where things are going and uh, making uh, uh, assumptive uh, budget uh, projections. Uh, he hasn't been far off. So I think uh, go going forward, um, we're just going to have to be vigilant and uh, and uh, uh, continue to push the federal and provincial governments uh, to maintain the uh, the support that they they've uh, already demonstrated uh, through this first phase of uh, 1.9 million dollars. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, I, municipalities are not allowed to run a deficit. So in the end, given the circumstances, you know are larger tax increases than you wanted and, inevitab and inevitability. <laughs> well, you know, you're right. Governments and municipal governments are not allowed to, to run deficits, but you know, I'll, I'll point to Toronto with, and maybe with some degree of angst. Um, Toronto can't run deficits uh, any more than we can, but at the same token, uh, they, when, when they come in with a, a negative budget, uh, the province always seems to find a way and or the federal government uh, to uh, provide additional funding so that uh, it somehow or other the Toronto budget uh, balances in that in that respect. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, the same consideration for all of the 444 municipalities uh, that uh, make up the province of Ontario. Uh, you mentioned earlier the, the casino, the Durham Live Complex, this just kind of COVID-19 took the wind out of their sails. Well, the, the Durham Live project itself uh, continues to uh, to move forward. Uh, so, uh, you know, we are uh, um, uh, provi providing the zoning required. I know that the uh, the uh, uh, triple properties, which is the developing group, uh, are an active uh, conversation with a, a number of um, companies that want to move into the Durham Live uh, site. It's a very exciting uh, um, vision that was put forward that is, is still being pursued. So on that front, um, again, uh, everything is a little slower and cautious uh, with the uh, with the pandemic and and the and the unknowns. But the um, the project itself is moving forward. The impacts on on the casino I've already alluded to, and mm -hmm. uh, we just don't know when when that's going to come back into uh, into operation. Uh, I know from uh, conversations that have been held that uh, they obviously want to get back as soon as possible. Uh, but again, we have to be realistic and, and uh, uh, cognizant of the potential health effects of, of large people gathering together. So uh, that's kind of a wait and see proposition. But the casino itself is ready to go. Uh, I mean, the, I understand that once they get a go ahead that would actually allow them to open in a meaningful way, uh, they're looking at something like eight weeks uh, 
to ensure that the uh, the staff uh, training is uh, current in the context of what is happening with the, with the pandemic, et, et cetera. Uh, some people uh, refresh your courses, if you will, because there was a lot of new hiring, uh, which is one of the big benefits to our municipality was the uh, improved, increased employment base. Uh, so there's, there's all of that activity. So about uh, from the time that uh, they, there's a, a go, uh, probably about eight weeks, and then we would see the, uh, the casino uh, fully operable. Uh, I know that uh, much of the interior, well, the interior has been completed, the, the, the machines are in place, the tables are in place. Uh, the only thing we're missing is, uh, is uh, the music and the people. Now, um, also news recently that Durham Live is going to share the cost of a Highway 401 overpass at Notion Road. Yeah, there, uh, there are a number of uh, improvements, uh, infrastructure improvements that require specifically around uh, the movement of traffic. Obviously, uh, uh, we expect to have uh, more people accessing the area. Uh, so uh, there is a, a new overpass that will connect Squires Beach to Notion Road on the north, with Squires Beach on the south, Notion Road on the, on the north side of the 401. Uh, and uh, so we, are, uh, we have an agreement in place uh, with the uh, with the developer uh, for a cost sharing agreement, and um, we're very pleased uh, with the partnership and and uh, their willingness to uh, work with the city and and to make the, the necessary financial contributions uh, to make this uh, project overall a success, not only for Pickering uh, but for Durham Region as a whole. Uh, and I think that's important to to note because as this the project unfolds, um, obviously and the employment base is there, and it's not just Pickering. Uh, Pickering folks that, uh, that will be employed. Uh, and uh, there are uh, tax revenues and the, and the casino revenues that flow. And I, I think everybody, um, I know you're aware, Deborah, that uh, Pickering made a commitment that uh, we would share uh, the, uh, the casino revenue with the region of Durham uh, with a 30% uh, contribution of our revenue uh, stream directly to the region uh, for them to use uh, as uh, they see fit to benefit uh, all of the uh, all of the municipalities that, that reside here. Uh, I want to move on now to the Pickering Nuclear Generating Station, uh, and news that Ontario supports a plan to, uh, I guess, once again extend the life. Um, your reaction to that? Um, the plant is operated effectively, efficiently, and, and safely in our municipality. It's been well received. Um, there, it is going to be decommissioned, and, and there is. I consider this more of a wind down process. Uh, so, you know, it, it's extended into 2025. Uh, it was 2024 into 2025. Um, I'm supportive of that personally. Council overall, I believe has, is supportive. Uh, the good news is that uh, with that decommissioning, uh, the city of Pickering has, uh, OPG has, as you said, the city of Pickering will be the uh, center of excellence for decommissioning. So they're going to use this decommissioning of the largest uh, can-do nuclear site uh, in the world to, uh, to create a center of excellence that will provide an opportunity again for employment growth in the nuclear sector, uh, will provide an opportunity uh, to partner with um, Ontario College is, is a, or University is a, is a good example. Um, and the, uh, to, to build uh, expertise and attract uh, people from around the world uh, to this municipality uh, to learn and uh, how to do this uh, effectively, efficiently, uh, and safely. So I'm, I'm overall supportive and pleased uh, that uh, we continue to uh, work uh, hand in hand with, uh, with uh, OPG and the Pickering Nuclear Generating Station. Okay, we're rapidly running out of time. We've only got about three minutes left. So I, I do also want to talk about uh, the decision that was made um, this week, Pickering moving forward with um, anti-black racism uh, initiatives and a task force. Well, with two minutes left, it's important to, uh, to say we acknowledge that there is systemic racism. Uh, we are committed as a municipality and as a council uh, to work with our black community to identify specifically uh, those points of, of, of um, concerns to, to small a word, uh, but uh, the, the pressure points that, that have to be addressed. Uh, we have a three-pronged approach 
uh, one with an external consultant, uh, basically a peer review, uh, one with an internal review, uh, which is made up of, of uh, city employees uh, who represent a broad range of, of uh, race and culture, but specifically focusing on the, the uh, black systemic issues. And thirdly, we have a uh, uh, community-driven uh, task force uh, that is being populated by uh, across the uh, a broad spectrum that will include business and, its, and, and the general population, uh, specific uh, groups that have organized around this issue uh, will be invited to participate and contribute uh, so that we hear specifically um, the, the Black lived experience and the difficulties that are being presented. And then we are going to work together with them uh, to find ways to break down those systemic barriers, uh, to remove them specifically within the city of Pickering to the best of our ability, and also uh, to have the city of Pickering as an influencer in other areas, such as education, such as health, such as legal, such as policing. Uh, those are things that we don't directly control, uh, but I think there are things that we can and we will uh, do our best uh, to influence in a positive way uh, to break down this, this, this systemic barrier to our black community. Uh, so with just one minute left, gosh, the time always goes fast. I'm going to leave this last minute to you. What are you looking forward to most about the coming year as your role as mayor? Well, I think obviously uh, we're all hopeful that uh, the uh, we'll get past the pandemic, and I'm looking forward to the things that were driving Pickering uh, previously. Uh, we have a tremendous growth opportunity and excitement. Our downtown city center, I I'm just so excited for that project. Uh, it's still there. It's still committed to, uh, by council uh, and, uh, and the developers that were involved. Uh, it will be slowed, obviously. Uh, but uh, to, to create a downtown, to create uh, a place that has never existed within our municipality uh, is an extremely exciting prospect. prospect. And I, I'm very, very pleased that I, I'm back in time to actually see that start up again and, uh, and, and, and get it well established. Okay, and we are glad to see your smiling face and that you are back in action. On that Deborah. note, we are out of time. Our thanks again to Pickering Mayor Dave Ryan, and thanks to you for joining us. Until next time. I'm Deborah Hutchison. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. That cup of coffee in the morning may seem like the only choice, but is it really? Caffeine found in the coffee bean does block the drowsy causing effect of chemicals, but that can only last for so long before we crash. The honey and tea way of getting out of bed is reaching for a cup of superfood matcha green tea. Unlike most teas, matcha powder uses the whole leaf and contains the plant energy of chlorophyll. One cup of matcha is like drinking 10 cups of regular green tea. Whisk in half a teaspoon until the tea dissolves. Within 10 minutes, matcha can regulate blood sugar, preventing glycemic slumps. Superfood Matcha Green Tea, your new most treasured energy booster.